Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Jimmy Brown. Just making a quick little video for you here today. Talk a little bit about research questions. I've had a few people ask me about um, what they mean, how they're different. So we're going to do that real quick though before I do. If you get value from this video, please don't be shy about liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it um, with others. I'm trying to really grow this so more folks can get this information. And apparently that helps. Also, if you have any questions, please don't be shy about leaving them in the um, comments down below. If you want a new video, me make a video on a different subject, please reach out leaving that. Would love to try to offer some info there. So research questions. Um, that's something that people have trouble with when they first start doing research. And I'm hoping that I can give you a little bit of insights here. They'll make it a little bit easier. So if we go to the next slide here, one of the challenges with research questions is people differentiating between a practical problem versus a social problem. And, one of the, and so here, if you look here on the slide, we've got three practical problems up top and three uh, research problems down below. And so the first one we'll talk about is a practical problem of there being an achievement gap between minority and majority students in, in, in schools. Well, that's a practical issue, but it's not a research issue. What we could say is a research problem though, which again is something we don't know, be something like it is not known if and to what extent XYZ program impacts that achievement gap. The research problem is always about something we do not know, something that we want to add to the knowledge base. And that's really important, particularly if you're doing say a dissertation or a thesis, that's the main, main difference there. Another example is, uh, which those of you who work in healthcare will know nursing. There's all this talk been going on for a while about the coming nursing shortage. So a practical problem is that professional nursing organizations are saying that there's going to be a shortage of qualified nurses in the next 10 years. Well, that's not a research problem though. The research problem as we would see would be something like, it is not known how registered nurses perceive, let's say organizational support structures influencing their intent to stay. And that's again, two very, very different things. Now, the, the bottom one, but this is, again, a good practical issue, not enough people recycling. If you talk to folks who are very big in environmentalism, they'll say one of the problems with recycling is that right now not enough people are doing it. So we could say, you know, that's a practical issue, but for a research problem, we could say maybe something like it is not known how social media messaging might impact people's intention to recycle. So again, the practical problem is something that impacts society or the world. The research problem is what we don't know about it. How do we know what to do about it? So when we think about that, that then leads to our research questions. So we'll go here. So a research question is what guides our research project. It is it comes from the research press, the problem statement, which we just talked about, and they're usually influenced by the theory, which we'll talk about in just a second, or the conceptual models. They don't just come out of the researcher's head. So you can't just say, I want to know more about X. That's not a research question. Or you can't say, what does so-and-so say about this? That's not a research question. It, what it does though, is it tells us what data we have to gather to answer that question. So if you looked at, um, if, you, if you see my video I made on different kinds of um, qualitative designs, you know that there's, there's, that influences that very much. They also can't be just yes or no. You can't say, does this influence this? Yes or no, that's not a research question. There's also one thing about qualitative versus quantitative a quant research question has to ask if and to what extent something is happening. It has to have a matching hypotheses and nulls, which we'll talk about in just a second. A qualitative research question looks at how and why something is happening. It's getting the perceptions and people's understanding the phenomena. It's getting some um, the, the depth of it. And, and, and later on, I'll make a video about the research cycle there's very different times in the research cycle when we want to do this. In fact, if you look at most research, there will be times where we will do um, uh, different ones. So like, for example, we think about things like, does a certain um, research, uh, does a certain leadership assessment help identify better leaders? We can do that as a quant because it's an if and to what extent. Once we know that, that we can then look at why from a qualitative standpoint. So talk to me about why, why does that particular thing impact their leadership ability? By converse, we can start off with a qualitative question, like say, um, what do, uh, you know, what do teachers in California think about X, Y, or Z program? Or, and we can get some, 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 some info about that. 
And once we get that info from a qualitative study of talking about their positions and their opinions and their stories, we can then use that to develop a model that we can then test in a quantitative study to a broader group of people. So two very different phases there, but they have to have research questions. So what's the example of some qualitative questions? These are designed to understand the phenomena being studied from the perspective of uh, uh, participants in that setting. They ask how, what, why. So why do people think this? What happened? What were the pieces that went into it? For example, our practical problem we had up front was nursing professionals, organizations, are saying there's gonna be a shortage of qualified nurses in the next 10 years. Our research problem is it is not known how registered nurses perceive organizational support structures influencing their attempt to stay in their current job. So let's say we did it, we went and did some, some, some uh, research on this, looked at the theories around it, and just so you know, this actually came from a study I was involved in a few years ago, and we found that there's a thing called Cantor's theory of structural empowerment that works there, as it talks about informal power, opportunity, resources, information support, and also Hertzberg's two-factor theory of job satisfaction can apply, as it talks about motivation and degrees of job satisfaction. So what we could then do is use those to create two research questions um, such as one saying, how do RNs perceive factors of organizational empowerment influencing their intent to stay in their current job for the next five years? And we also have a second research question that says something like, how do RNs perceive motivation and job satisfaction influencing their intent to stay in their current jobs over the next five years? And from that, we'll, and I'll make a video later about interview questions, we could develop interview questions that get to those things like informal power, opportunity, resources, all that kind of stuff. We would do those interview questions, but the RQs are at a higher level. Um, and, and just so you know, right here, I've got two RQs listed. So there are different opinions in the literature about how many research questions you must have. My personal view is you need to have as many as it takes to answer the, to address the problem. There are some schools of thought that say for a qualitative study, you must have at least two. Uh, I know some universities actually require that if you're doing a, a master's thesis or a doctoral study. Depending upon what your school says, go with that. But if we look at the research issues, we really got to think about what are those different ones. So from a quantitative standpoint, quantitative looks at measuring the relationship or the differences between two variables. So it may look at the impact of some treatment. That's our experimental or non-experimental. So say, for example, if we're wanting to look at if um, some exercise program causes weight loss. That would be an experimental or using a quasi-experimental treatment just because of control issues. Changes over time, that's usually, those are usually correlational. So does X change over time as a result of Y, things like that. Or the differences between two groups, causal comparative, which you know the, the example we have here, which the allowed education may be more of a causal comparative because you have two different groups and you're assuming that the differences in those two is what, uh, the, 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 what we're measuring causes those differences. So the, we'll get, we'll, I'll make a video later on different kinds of uh, quantitative designs, but those are just some high level ones. Um, quantitative research must have hypotheses. Now there is some, there are some folks in the lit who say that there's something called a qualitative, quantitative descriptive that they say don't need hypotheses. Um, for the record, I completely disagree with that. Um, my personal opinion is the way I was always taught is that a quantitative study has to have hypothesis because the key thing about hypotheses, if you're testing if and to what extent, and when we say to what extent, we're determining if it is more than we expect by chance alone, and that's what the hypothesis tells us. It's determining if it's more than we expect by chance alone, and we'll talk about it in just a second. And, the, and we also want to focus on collecting data for each variable. Now, I'll make a video later that talks about the difference between independent and dependent variables and predictor versus criterion variables and things like that, but for the most part, that's the focus. So let's go to our practical problem we talked about in our examples. The practical problem being there's an achievement gap between minority and majority students. We know this, it's in the lit, um, it's been studied, studied to death. But there are different reasons as to why. So what we're gonna do is do a study that says, it is not known if and to what extent, say XYZ program, because people are always trying to do programs to address this, impacts the achievement gap between the, between the students. So look at those variables. How do we do measure that? Well, we would assume that we're going to have two groups of students, those who have been through it and those who haven't. And so for the majority and the minority students, we'd have students who've been through this program. And then we're going to look at them on some standardized measures. So ABC standardized tests. Every school has standardized tests. We're not going to debate the uh, value of high, of high stakes testing and all that in the schools, but we're just going to say 
we know schools have that. So what we would do here is we have a research question that says, how does the XYZ program impact the scores of minority students on standardized tests as compared to majority students using ABC, ABC standardized tests? That's what we're gonna look at. And so what we basically would do is, and we can actually this archival data, is take a, find like a school district that's used this program, look at their standardized tests and compare the group scores in a way that uh, we determine if there's a difference or if there's been a change. And if so, how does it happen by, by uh, chance alone? And so our hypothesis would be, we are, our, our, the H1A, if you've been through quantitative research, is what we call our alternative hypothesis. That says there is a difference. So XYZ program positively influences minority students' scores on ABC standardized tests as compared to majority students. So we measure them, measure them before the program or measure them after the program, that'd be a correlational. If we had say two groups, it'd be called comparative, but we'd be looking at that. H1O is our null hypothesis that talks about, um, does, it, that says XYZ program does not influence minority students' scores on ABC standardized tests as compared to minor, majority students. Now, an important thing to note about quantitative research questions is when we ask these, we're talking about more than by chance alone. So even if we see a difference in the scores of these students between those who are in the program and those who are not, as compared to our moderating variable, if that difference is, is not large enough that we would say it's by chance alone, say it's a, it's a difference of a 100 point scale, right? And let's say the average minority student in this, this test is scoring um, an 85 and the average majority student is scoring a 90. I'm just making these numbers up, so I don't know what that is. Um, and let's say if we saw a two point difference, we might say mm, that may not make a difference if we look at the statistics and determine how much that would influence. If let's say we found that it was, um, it went, the major, minority students wouldn't say, a, the majority students stayed at 90 and the minority students would say 85 to 95, well, that's more than likely gonna be a big difference. So, and we would look at that still and say, is that by chance alone or is that something that's, that's significant? And if it is significant, then we would, as we say, reject the null saying that we think there's something going on. And our research question would be, yes, it appears that this does influence that. So that's about it. Hope, hope you got value from that. Uh, last page here is just Crestwell's uh, research design. That's the main way I use for this. I'll put a link down in the description for this. And uh, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this. And like I said, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to leave in the comments. And if there's other topics like me to cover, don't be shy about leaving them there. Thanks a lot.